What is up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of me interviewing players around MLS. This usually would be Teutonic Takes, but, you know, Columbus beat me to the punch and they signed this guy right here with me. What's up, Max? Thank you so much for coming on the show. This should have been done a while ago. We never, we never got to it, and then you went ahead and got a first-team contract with another team. Congratulations again. A lot of Quakes fans are excited for you, and they will be following the crew this year because of you. What's up, man? Welcome. Yeah, thank you. Happy to be here. It means a lot. And, um, yeah, I feel like this interview is a long time coming now, so glad to get out of it. Yeah, we yeah, we had you do some promos for Daytonic and Quakes 2 before, so this interview really should have happened a long time ago. Uh, I hope it I want to talk to you a little bit about kind of your first impressions of getting drafted. You applied for the draft, right? Was there some sort of thought in your mind that, hey, you know what? This might actually happen. I might get uh, a contract from this. Was there a thought in your mind like that? Yeah, definitely. I really didn't have, like, a concrete expectation going into it. Like, I wasn't sure when I would be drafted or, like, what teams were really looking at me until, like, Honestly, like during, but my agent was letting you know, like this team kind of asserted interest, this team, maybe. So every time one of those teams went, I was like on edge. But I mean, once it happened, it's honestly an amazing feeling just to know that, like, there's any team out there, there could be any team that knows about you or that has interest in you that you never would have thought of like before. So yeah, no, I was really excited and my family was happy. So it was a good experience. Definitely, uh, like an anxiety rated experience too though. Yeah, and, and going fourteenth, right? Maybe you don't expect to go that soon too. So something that was a little exciting was there was top prospects in college and then all of a sudden you're the first MLX next pro guy to be drafted. I mean, a big weight was lifted off your shoulders at that moment, right? Yeah, definitely. Like it sounds kinda cliche, but when I heard my name I just kinda felt like I was like finally, you know. So it was good. It was definitely like interesting and unique experience for you. And when you saw the graphic and they didn't have your picture, how did that make you feel? Yo, everyone was talking about that. Everyone was kind of making fun about that. But, I mean, honestly, like, I feel like they could have at least got a picture. Yeah, right, right, right. Like, that's on them. Like, they could have had any picture, but they had no pic. And then, I don't know, I was kind of upset about it. But they ended up fixing it, like, after the draft. They did, yeah, yeah, yeah. That made me feel a little better, but yeah, there's definitely some friendly banter everybody was even with me off their ass. Uh. And honestly, they could have hit up our photographer, TJ, because he's at the Quake Stew games. He has like at least 200 of you. So, yeah. Bro. And we got any of those, but no, nah, that's good. They fixed it and they made a post about it, and I like that. I think I think that's yeah. a little bit to add to the story. And especially since you're MLS Next Pro's first drafted player, they should have a picture of you. So, definitely something to be excited about. Um, we had a chance to kind of ask a question to your coach, Wilfred, and he told us a little bit about you. Uh, how was your experience, you know, learning your new coach and then kind of experiencing that new system? Yeah, I really like him as a coach, to be honest. Well, he's really passionate about, like, the football that's being played and all the little details. And he was a former player professionally as well. So, obviously, like, I respect him and everyone respects such his philosophies and and you know, stuff like that. So I think he has a really good, like, player coach relationship to where it's, like, he respects us and we'll obviously he respects him. But, yeah, it's definitely a new system to me. And I feel like every single day I've been, like, learning and interviewing. So I like him a lot at first. Did a good experience with, like, a new style of football and stuff like that. Paul. And what made you choose the number 27? <laughs> so basically, kind of a funny story. So, like, going into, um... Like, our last season trip, I didn't have a number yet. And, like, the equipment guy was just like, hey, like, uh, we have this list of numbers. Like, like, what do you want to wear for this first, like, friendly game? Like, just, like, a casual, like, and I said, it, had no, it wasn't official. And I was just, like, of all the numbers, like, 27 were, like, the best one to me. And then, like, I literally just walked in. So then after I signed, like, I walked to the locker room, and then I had that like, Max Austin 27, and so I was like, <laughs> Uh, no, I guess that's what it is. But I'm rocking with it, though. It's not bad. Cool. Hey, together, it, it adds up to nine, right? So, you know, it could be something in the future. Who knows, oh, right? It could be. Who knows, yeah. <laughs> that, no, that's, that's awesome. Uh, it's 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 a pretty funny story. I, mean, I guess you only think about it, right? You know, you pick a number and you think, oh, maybe this is the number they use for today. And then all of a sudden, you see the promos made for Columbus True at 27, right? So, uh, well, it's definitely exciting. So, 
how are you getting along with the guys in Columbus? I know maybe you had a good connection, especially with some of the Quakes 2 guys, like Rodolfo, with Nathan, or Alejandro. How are you getting along with the crew deck? Yeah, it's a good group of guys. I feel like on the crew, there's like a, I say a group of like seven to eight guys that are like within my age range, like 21, 22, 23. So I feel like we are all like honestly getting like super close. And then there's obviously like the veteran guys who are kind of just have more in the leadership role and trying to help us out in the war, that sort of relationship. But it's been really good. Like since the first time I was there, like even the veteran guys that welcomed me, like at Oaken Arms, like we're going to help. So yeah, it's been like surprising. Like at the beginning, well, I was just so expecting to see like how to panel and get into the mix, but it's been pretty easy for. Is there any veteran guys that have fought at the end of their wing or someone that you're working with really, really postal? There's a, yeah, I'd say like a two late lows that like will encourage me, like speak stage, you like probably like Darlington or a dad and then Kevin Molino. Yeah. They I think they've been in MLF. They both been in us for a long time, like pulled in and out. Yeah. Like Kevin, Kevin, especially like he's played on the way, he's like been an actor, so. We talk a lot, and then, like, Darlington was just, like, encouraging to, like, you know, like, you being confident and playing my game, stuff like that, sir. Yeah, especially, those, like you said, those two guys have been in MLS for a long time, and, and having a long career in MLS is not easy. So, you know, soaking in all that information that they kind of tell you is always going to be beneficial. Um, but, no, it's exciting, uh, exciting stuff that you get to work with those two MLS greats. Uh, and talking a little bit about you growing up now, let's go, let's take it back to you as a kid. Um how did you start to love the sport of soccer? What what came to you when you started to love the game? Yeah, so I grew up in Fresno, California, which is like pretty big soccer community, to be honest. Um, and I don't know. I just I fell in love with the game like just at a very young age. You know how like everyone's first sport is like soccer. Right. And when I was like super young, I was just like I was pretty good at it, like noticeably better than like the other like little kids I might see and stuff. Like, it was nothing serious, but like I was like, noticeably like pretty good and then from there I just started to like I always just loved playing like I loved being outside I loved just like having the ball on my feet um I just enjoyed it a lot and then as I grew older I just sort of like loved winning and I loved scoring goals and like I loved attacking and dribbling and I even still to this day like I just love having the ball on my feet so I think it's just like that aspect of it feeling free and just the freedom of playing with the ball that's really what made me fall in love with the sport. Awesome. And speaking a little bit about like falling in love with it, what drives you and motivates you every single day you get up to play again? Honestly, my main motivating factor is like coming from Fresno, just because like there's no really like academies around that area or like you know any big team or like a lot of exposure. So like I want to be one of all few people that have like really like made it out of Fresno and like just like inspire younger kids because there's a lot of talent out there like a lot of talent but I just like some funny about a lot of the still here and I just eventually as I like you know I'll just say I'll keep encouraging just make younger kids seem like it's possible you know that's what I that's my motivated did so. all right Max so tell me a little bit about Jonathan Mensa. I know he got traded while you were you guys were down in Florida but what was it like losing a leader like that in your locker room in Columbus? And what do you think the Quakes are getting? Yeah, I mean, obviously, I've been in Columbus for like a very short time. But in my time that I was there, he's a, like a really good leader. Obviously, like a really good player, but like even better person. Someone like me, like a rookie coming in, like not really knowing anybody. Um, Obviously, kind of nervous on the first day. Like he was the first guy to come out to me welcome me like ask me if I need anything so yeah having someone like that who's obviously like won MLS Cup and been a successful player in the league for a while it meant a lot for him to just kind of go out his way to like help me out if I need anything so you know I would say San Jose is definitely getting like a leader and just like a good person overall so yeah I think it's definitely a good pickup for San Jose to say well and now there's this connection with Columbus and San Jose, right? With you on that team, we're going to be watching you guys up there, and Jonah on, on San Jose, so Columbus fans are going to be watching those games. So there's a, there's a little talk, you know, that we traded you for Jonah, so maybe maybe you got to be the leader of that team down, right? Yeah, well, it might take you some time. We'll see. But yeah, I've seen those. Those are kind of fun, but 
Yeah, it is kind of weird how it all worked out. Would you want to be captain of the Columbus crew one day, if, if possible? Maybe one day, but I would have to wait. I'd have to get some experience under my belt for a while. But yeah, maybe one day. Who knows? And now that you're in MLS, have you checked out your FIFA card? Is that in there yet? You know, like, are you waiting for it? I I haven't even seen that. I don't think it's even out yet, but I'm sure. I doubt the card will be anything crazy, but we'll see. You never know. Maybe we'll talk about that pace or that shooting. You know, we're going to need a little bit of work. I mean, have you thought to the EA about, you know, maybe getting your card, right? I have it. I think I don't even have FIFA right now, but I think, like, once, like, the roster's update and everything, then it's on there. So when it comes out, I'll definitely look at it and, you know, probably get upset about some of the ratings full. Yeah, we'll see. Then we got to make a video, you know, of you shooting penalties. You know, we got to do something, you know. You got to rate the boost that rating. Yeah, I got to send them some highlights and be like, yo, upgrade my shoot with happy. <laughs> awesome, awesome. Awesome, and who do you kind of model your game after? Um, what inspir Who inspires you to play the game? Um, in terms of like actual professional players, yeah. Like at, okay, like at a young age, like I remember the first player that I really started watching was like young Ronaldo when he was on Manchester United, like back when he was like just like bursting onto the scene. So that's who I like really first started watching, and like. What made me fall in love with the game. And then nowadays, I really like uh, Riyad Mahrez from Manchester City. I like the way he plays. So, yeah, I'll say those guys kind of inspire like my play style, definitely. Is there some sort of Mahrez' game that you try to emulate? Is there something that you try to work on like him? Yeah, definitely. I think him being left-footed, playing on the right side, um, being able to use both feet and just like kind of like killing every defender 1v1, like how he does. I try to emulate that, I would say. And your coach, Wolf or ne uh, Nancy, said that you had no fear when taking on a player one-on-one. Uh, speaking a little bit about that, what goes through your mind? You just think like, hey, man, this guy is a crazy defender in MLS, but I got him. You know, I, I got drafted. You know, what, what goes through your mind? Yeah, honestly, like in the moment, I don't even really think about like who I'm going against. Like I just, I kind of approach it all the same, but I use, I just like whenever like the play is developing, whenever like I just always think like, Okay, like, if the ball gets switched, like, I get this isolation, like, I'm going to go. Like, I already have my mind made up. But, like, I don't really, like, think about who it is, to be honest. Like, it doesn't even really cross my mind. Is there some sort of cues that you are looking for? Like, let's say their their body's turned a little bit where you can find, okay, split second, you're going to go that way, you know? Is there something that's going through your mind at, in terms of soccer? Yeah, like, depending on the – usually the defenders will try to force, like – um attacking players like out wide like towards the sideline or like away from the dangerous areas obviously so like if they're doing that like an exaggerated amount maybe i'll try to like draw my shoulder and then go inside so they're not expecting it but i mean normally you kind of just read the game like it's nothing like i don't think about it too much to be honest let's say you're talking to a couple of kids from fresno or even columbus now and they want to get better at their soccer game what are you telling them just to work on it I mean, for one, I'm just going to tell them to enjoy the game because if you're not enjoying it, it's going to be hard to feel motivated and to get better, to be honest. But um, I would just say first touch. I mean, especially now, like, the higher levels that I play, like, everyone has a good first touch. Well, I'll probably just say that. So you're going to see Max Arson on some TikTok videos where he has that godly first touch in this year? Hopefully, hopefully, yeah. Awesome, and... What's something you're trying to work on I, this year? Maybe there's a couple parts of your game that you feel like can improve? Yeah, definitely. Um, I would say... I'm going to look behind forward. Sorry about that. Um, I would say, like, my defensive work, definitely. Um, I think I could get better with, like, pressing and, like, closing down space, all, you know, not getting cut inside, things like that. So I think, like, defensively, I can just be sharper and, you know, stuff like that, so... Is there a certain drill that you guys are doing in Columbus that's a little different than crates that you kind of like more? Um, I don't know about a certain drill, but like I'll say like the play style is a lot different, and just like the pressing is different, um, stuff like that. So like like I was saying earlier, it's a new system, and it's not that I like it better; it's just different. And like learning new systems just makes you more well-rounded. So I'm pretty excited about that.
And then someone that doesn't watch the Columbus crew, what would you say to watch out for when they're watching the game with you in it or maybe one of your teammates in it? Uh, what the, what are you looking for? Yeah, I think you're looking for a very like attractive spiral of soccer, especially with the ball. Um, I think the philosophy is just like it's very like attack minded, you know. And it's I think if someone were to watch it, they would think that uh, we're just like an exciting scene to watch. That's what I would say. Yeah, and talking a little bit about Quakes too again, how did that experience that you had with the team help you in your experience with the crew? Is there some sort of things that that helped you get ready for this moment? Yeah, I think um, my experience at Earthquakes was, um, it was really positive to be honest. I feel like I improved a lot, and I feel like the coaches that I had, both Alex Cavello and Dan DeGear, like, they both helped me a lot, and they were both, like, individually, like, were telling me things about, like, my own individual performance, so that helps me. I think in specifics, like, I just think, like, maintaining possession of the ball was something that they, by both teams would stress. And I think that definitely helped me, like, coming into Columbus Crew. Just, like, retaining the ball and, like, having composure on it in, like, high-pressure situations. That's what I would say. And when you got drafted, did anybody that you didn't expect to reach out, did they reach out to you um, from the Quake side? Ooh, it's a good question. Um, Obviously, like, all my former teammates reached out to me and were super excited. Um, I don't know. Oh, I uh, – yeah, and I, honestly – no one unexpected. Everyone was really nice about it. I mean, Rodolfo probably made you up. He's like, hey, man, like, that was awesome. Congratulations. I remember he was saying how, you know, he really liked playing with you last year. So it was kind of like a, a little duo there. So he probably felt so, or, or really, really happy for you. So that was nice. Um, let me tell you this. Uh, what was your favorite away trip last year? And which one are you most excited for this year? That's a really good question. Um, my favorite away trip, I'm going to go with Vancouver just because I had never been to Canada before. And I remember we had a really big win. We beat them three to two and we needed that win to like stay in the playoff race. And I remember I had an assist that game. That was pretty good. I think Rudy scored that game too, probably. But that was a really fun one. I'll probably say Vancouver because also the city was like, Super cool, and I'd never been to Canada, though, and it was a good time. And are you excited to go out to Vancouver now again? Yeah, I'm sure. Uh, you know, to answer the second part of the question, I would be the most excited to go to New York if I've never been there. So either New York team, that's probably my number one destination I'm looking forward to. And you guys are going twice, right? Because you see both. Yeah. Yeah, so Eastern Conference. Yeah, Eastern Conference. So. How is it adjusting for the time difference? Is, is this your first time living in the East Coast? Yeah, at first, it was um, pretty hard, to be honest. Like, I was, like, my Steve schedule was messed up and stuff. But now, like, obviously, I'm used to it. But the only thing is, like, sometimes I'll text people back home, and they'll be, like, asleep or something in the morning. And I'll be like, why don't they text me back? And I'm like, oh, at the time, they're bold. But hey, is there anything that you're doing that's, like, what Ohioans do, right? Is that how you say it, Ohioans? Is there anything, like, are you, are you I don't know, you know, how big, uh, I think they're called, Buckeyes? Do you ever try to Buckeyes? Yeah, yeah. Nah, I haven't tried one. Um, I think the only thing is just the weather is like the biggest thing. Where I'm dressing a lot warmer. Uh, I'm not seeing as much sun. But I'm trying to think. Like, oh, I've gone to actually. I've been going to hockey games a little bit. That's big out here. So I'll say that. Well, they have the the Blues, right? If I'm if I'm mistaken, or the Columbus well, um, Blue Jackets. Blue Jackets. Yeah, Blue Jackets. And the stadium is like really close to where I'm staying at, so, yeah. Are you in the proper? Like, are you in the, really in the city? Yeah, like, I'm downtown. Yeah, I'm not in the city. Awesome, man. And what's some first impressions that you thought about the city? It seems like the first thing I notice is, like, I'll see, like, a bunch of Columbus crew, like, posters or, like, world wars, and, like, I'll see people wearing, like, the hoodies and stuff like that, so it seems like the, the people, like, really like Resonated with the card. That was the first thing I noticed, honestly. So I think that's the bull. And have Ed, has anybody noticed you yet? Is it that super fan that's like, hey, yo, what's Max Arch, dude? That was good. Nah, sadly, that hasn't happened yet, but maybe we'll start playing some games, but not yet. 
and oh, you, you know, man, maybe you're at the grocery store and you're grabbing something and all of a sudden the guy comes up and starts screaming at you, you know? Something happens. Maybe you don't want that. You do want it the same time, right? <laughs> yeah, no, that would be cool. That would be cool work. Guys, if you're watching this in Columbus, if she likes for herself, you know, you definitely really to say hi. But <laughs> awesome, awesome. And so you're a rookie in the first year of this Apple TV deal with MLS. What do you think about this deal? I know this might be a little big question, but are you excited for it out at the player in the league? Yeah, I think um, I'm excited for it because I've heard a lot of good things about it. And like they showed us like well, um, the layout of the, the substituent and stuff. Mm. And it seems like there's a lot of like extra like um, things that come with it. Like there's like player interviews like yeah. near profiles and like you could watch, we could like watch back every game and stuff. So I think that aspect is really good to be honest. Like, I think it's gonna be like, like really like modernized and stuff like that for them. Is your family back home and your friends back home? Are they all already? Cause they have to watch your games, right? I mean, they, yeah. uh, here, they couldn't even watch your games, but now everybody can watch your games. So, is everybody getting Apple TV? Yeah, all my, my family has it for sure, and I think my friends are, like, working on getting it. So, yeah, they're going to have to get it because Tyler's saying to watch. No, I know, definitely. And, yeah, I was a little worried about the, you know, the pay subscription, but if they had T-Mobile, they can get it for free, you know, so that's, that's always a good thing, too. Um, yeah. Are you, when do you expect to make your first team debut? I know this is a tough question, uh, but when would you like to make the first team debut? That is a tough question, but I want to make my debut at home in Columbus. And ideally, like, my family would be there for it. Yeah. On the, in terms of a time frame, hopefully sooner than later, but oh, I can't really predict it. But yeah, I think it would be really cool if, like, my family was there. And build that home in front of the fan so I could like show them what I can do. I think that would be like the purpose going. Would you rather score on your debut or have three assists? Score. <laughs> score. It's, it don't matter the assist, right? It could be five, it could be six. Ten. <laughs> the goal on your debut is of the dreams. So I'll just say goal. Awesome. Awesome. Which jersey do you like more, the black one or the yellow one? I think the yellow one looks pretty cool. I'm going to go yellow. All right. Cool, cool. Yeah. Have you tried Skyline Chili yet? No, I haven't even heard of that. What is that? It's like an Ohio thing where you eat pasta, spaghetti, and then they put chili on top. That's like an Ohio thing. Oh, really? Yeah, I haven't tried it. But, um, uh, let me... Oh, there you go. All right, cool. Sorry. Sorry about that. It's hell long. Um, awesome. So... If you went back, is there anything you would change in your whole soccer career? Oh, that is another good question. I think I wish when I was like in my early, well, I mean, just in my teenage years, I wish that I was like playing at a higher level. Like I wish that I played like academy, you know, when I was like 15 or 14, 15, 16, 17, like 18 years old. Because back, like I was saying, like when president, like we didn't have any, but I wish there was a way to where like maybe I could like commute to San Jose or something like that and play academy. I think that's the only thing I wish I would change because I feel like I would be a lot better earlier. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And it's it's kind of crazy that your story is really a great one. I mean, you didn't go to academy. You hopped on that Quakes 2 team and then you got drafted. I mean, it's something that's truly, truly um it's like the underdog story that everybody wants, right? You're the product of the league that was made for people like you, right? So it's something that um, a lot of people are probably going to resonate with your story because it's even if, like you said, you didn't go to academy. So if you don't go to academy, you could still make it. And, and that's why I w I'm excited to see your career in Columbus. And a lot of us in San Jose, we're going to be rooting for you because it's it's truly a, a underdog story and, and someone that, you know, started, maybe started a little later, but you're, you're here. You're a first team player. On the Columbus Crew, so it's exciting to see. Yeah, definitely. I appreciate that. Um, yeah, I know. I think, yeah, I think about that a lot. Like, my path was, like, definitely not, like, the usual path or, like, the easiest. But I just think, like, for anyone, like, whatever, wherever you're at at that certain moment, you just have to kind of make the most of it. Because, like, I would have never expected this to happen, like, a year ago when I was, like, all in Quakes too. you know? So, like, I think it's just about, like, staying ready even when maybe nothing seems like there's anything coming your way to be honest so 
Yeah, and are you doing anything in Columbus to pass the time? I know you have training and things like that, but are there other hobbies that you're taking up out there? Um, recently I've been getting into golf a little, just because okay. like my friends around here like golf a lot. But I'm also still working towards graduating from Houston Davis, so I'm taking a couple online classes. So that takes up my time too. And and UC Davis is usually not the biggest prospect school for soccer, right? I mean. Quincy America Lolling there, but I think that's one of the only uh, soccer guys. So having your name already, I mean, you're still at school and you're already a pro player, right? So, uh, you know, a lot of UC Davis people probably think that's really cool. And, and maybe you have friends out there that are like, damn, dude, they're already in the, in the after that you're still in school. You know, so that's, that's, a, that's a trip a little bit. Yeah, Quincy's my guy too. I talked to him at, uh, we had like this rookie thing. You had to go to Orlando. He was there and we were talking and catching up. But yeah, definitely. UC Davis. Uh, it doesn't have a lot of players that are in the MLS, so to say, but I think it's on the call out the Nissan players that really the sell, yeah, stuff like that. But yeah, I like, I really enjoyed my time there. I used to do this, so I'm proud to be, you know, like associated with them this day. Yeah. Well, what are you trying to finish up your degree in? Economics. Oh, cool, cool. So, I mean, you're ready to save that money and then invest it. Are you both thinking that anything already? Not yet, but on the fly, I got to get the degree. I got to learn stuff. I got to learn. Awesome, awesome. And are there any personal goals that you have this year? Maybe if it's not soccer, but that to be. No, I definitely have some soccer goals. Um, I want to make my debut, obviously. Um, I would like to appear in half of the games. That's another one of my goals, just to appear in them and get mids. Um, and I want to get at least one goal and one assist. Those are my goals right now. So we'll see how it happens. You know, you never know what could happen with, like, what it's a long season, so you never know. But right now, I'm starting off with small goals. Firstly, I just want to make my baby full. Is there a certain team, I know this is maybe a long question, but is there a certain team that you want to be able to play for one day? If, like a dream club of yours that you'd say, you know what, that's the team I want to kind of play for? I've always been an Arsenal fan, so I think I'm going to go with Arsenal, especially now that we're top of the table, so... Well, I mean, I can see it now. Arvston and Saka, you know, fighting for that position, you know. Maybe who knows? Maybe one day it comes, you have a crazy season in MLS, and then who knows, right? But just Apple TV. Yeah, you know, or just maybe there's more people looking up the league and more at Trevor Dog. Yeah, you never know. Whoa, whoa. But I mean, you, you didn't stop dreaming your whole career, and this is where it got you. So definitely don't lose sight of that Arsenal team because it could come. Maybe the next Thierry Henry was born in Fresno. You know, who knows, right? Yeah, who knows, man? It was <laughs> cool, man. Um, are you? Do you have a plan to kind of meet up with any of the place two guys? And if you guys come out to California, or are they gonna come out to see your games somewhere in California? I'm not sure. I don't think. I mean, I know that Columbus, like we don't play San Jose in the regular season. Yeah. So, I kind of wish we did because that would be kind of cool. But, um. I mean, yeah, definitely. If if I'm ever in like the same city as them somehow, because they all talk like me and Rudy talk all the time. So like, yeah. if we ever are like we ever cross paths in any of the cities or something, we'll definitely hang out. But for now, yeah, I'm I'm in Ohio for a while. So awesome. I have some fan questions to get through, if you don't mind. Uh, Alejandro Cano, a fan, said, <laughs> okay. do, you miss, "Do you miss me?" <laughs> Yeah, yeah I did. and Sam, that's my boy. We used to live together. Um, he's a seaside legend, so um, I hope he's doing well. I hope he balls out this year for place two. And then another fan, Nathan Scott, asked, "Do you miss him as well?" Yeah, Nate's my guy. I do miss him. I hope he's killing it at Riverside. Um, proper number six, that guy. I'll tell you, proper. Awesome. And then we kind of got through all the rest of the questions earlier in the interview. And I, I kind of want to say thank you so much, Max, for coming on the show. Um, it's been a pleasure to talk to you. We'll look, probably get you back on the scene. You know, if you have your debut, we'll, we'll talk a little bit about that and how you felt during that time. But uh, we'll, we'll definitely keep in touch. And you have a lot of people in San Jose kind of rooting for you. No, yeah, definitely. Thanks for having me. I Like I said, this I feel like this is a long time prelude. The end. Yeah, I got love for all the people in San Jose because – I know, like, after I got drafted, a lot of people from San Jose were, like, supporting me and stuff. Well, I really appreciate that because I feel like my time at Quakes 2 was really fun. And, like, I thought we had a good team. And, you know, all the supporters, like, it was getting angry to dodge. So, 
yeah, I'll definitely have to come on again. And then maybe we get a joint one. Me and you and Rudy, that'd be kind of cool. So. Yeah, we could do that. We could definitely do that. See, you know, halfway through the season, uh, maybe we could talk, you know, some MLS teams, right? So it's definitely exciting. Uh, I'll definitely have you guys back on.